Hello ladies. Today I'd like to continue on the subject of organization and one of the reasons for organization is also for surprisingly emotional and mental stability because the more you feel in control of the stuff that's around you of that cluttered drawer of the correspondence that's not done and the sewing room that's uh, not clean the more you feel control of it the less uh, fragmented in your uh, mind you feel the less uh, whirling thoughts uh, so I'm going to start right now by telling you so far what I've done today now keep in mind that everybody is different and your life is different than mine some of you have a different type of things that you have to look after a farm maybe or uh, a husband whose work is on a different pattern and you have to adjust to so many different things so I'm not saying that my method is the best I have changed my methods of organization and uh, my schedule over time because your life changes so today what I have done so far is I have gotten up and I've had uh, my shower and I've gotten dressed and I have found a matching teacup I think this is as matching as I can find it has uh, the white rose on it and um, looks kind of like my dress which I sewed uh, last year and it has which has white roses on it and I've taken a piece of the fabric for my background as you can see behind me and used it on my mantle um, to go with my dress and so then after I did that I swept the living room floor I swept the dining room floor I did not however move furniture around and get under things I was just trying to get the surface just in case someone came over or just for my own uh, just so it looked good to me so I wasn't going to do a big upheaval and then I uh, unloaded the dishwasher and I put more dishes in the dishwasher I did a load of laundry and uh, hung that outside and I went to the sewing room and um, put some things away there and kind of organized my sewing in the order in which I'd like to do it because I have some things cut out some things sewn for other people and for me and my mending so uh, and then I also culled a little bit in a, a drawer of clothing and decided that uh, I could get rid of a couple of things that were uh, no, mo no longer useful to me then I went and emptied and cleaned out one kitchen drawer that was extra that was on top of daily work the daily work of dishes and laundry and cleaning your bathroom and by the way when I'm in the bathroom taking my shower and getting and after I've got dressed that's when I clean the bathroom while I'm still in there it's nothing to wipe down the sink and to um, to, to sweep the floor or wash it with a cloth and uh, it's just easier for me to do and I feel better when I come out because that job is not hanging over me so uh, so I straighten things while I'm in there and kind of refold a couple of towels it doesn't take a lot of time uh, when you're cleaning as you go but if you wait for the big cleanup day it's arduous so that is what I have done then I have uh, gone outside and I put an apron over this and uh, pulled a few <laughs> blades of grass and as you know in these plush countrysides grass just grows in everything so I'm busy trying to clean up a garden we got good weather suddenly and uh, everything's very grown up so I, I did that I walked around a little bit and I just wanted to also include uh, when you get up in the morning to plan after you have taken care of your appearance and feel kind of put together uh, to go outside if you can if it's if it's not uh, wintry dangerous weather and uh, and have a have a little uh, a little mind uh, examination of what what you want to accomplish today what's bothering you today and uh, pray about everything and I want to remind you all to read Philippians chapter 8 not just chapter 4 not just verse 8 which everybody loves that verse you know one that says uh, whatever things are lovely and good and kind think on these things if you read the rest of it it's quite amazing because it says if you will do all these things it's the one that also has the verse in it about not being anxious 
but take everything to God in prayer. And um, so I have known people that have taken that so seriously that if something's bothering them, they just stop and, uh, and pray about it. But it also has a promise in there. It says, if you do these things, then uh, the God of peace will be with you. So practice, practice that and read the whole chapter. You'll find some things in there you might not have seen before. So now in organization, I help, I'll just share with you what I've discovered uh, that works for a lot of women. Maybe not all of you, but might be helpful to some of you. You know, I've mentioned daily work. That is, you know, clean up the clutter in the living room, get the dishes done, uh, sweep the kitchen floor, wipe the bathroom sink, do the laundry, load your dishwasher, or wash, do a hand washing, and, uh, and make the beds. This is just daily work. And what I've discovered about that, if you will get that daily work done, and then do one extra thing like I did today, I cleaned out one drawer in the kitchen. I discovered that I had neglected it so long uh, that I actually felt I had disrespected that drawer because there was stuff stuck on it and and there were old things that uh, that people hadn't used in years. I just kind of hadn't noticed it. Sometimes you get so used to looking at something that you don't even notice it anymore. So I brought the trash can close to the drawer and I began to empty it and pretty soon I found I didn't need anything in the drawer. It had been a catch-all. I cleaned it well and uh, and now I feel like I need to uh, be more respectful of, of that drawer and of the things in my kitchen and of all my things. Be respectful of them. And I've heard from these uh, doomsayers, these people that are just gloom and doom all the time saying, well, you shouldn't be concerned about that kind of thing because after all, uh, the world is going to come to an end and it's all going to disappear. It's all going to be burned up. But you know, ladies, uh, that is like saying your life is worthless. But that's not true. God put us here, and we're to glorify Him while we're here. And I believe that being uh, trying to be organized and trying to be good stewards of uh, the possessions we have are part of honoring Him and glorifying Him. And yes, these things do not mean anything. They aren't. You can't take them with you uh, when you die. But while we're here, we're responsible to be respectful of our things and to, because they're gifts from God. And uh, it, it, show, it, it helps create refinement in life. And so, yes, we do. We take care of our things. We look after our kitchens. And in the United States, Americans especially love their kitchens. They, uh, and the women especially, occupy their kitchens. That's their domain. And they love to have other women come in and, and visit with them while they fix things. So our kitchens are paramount in giving us a feeling of grounded establishment. We just we like to have a kitchen, a nice kitchen. And if, even if you don't have a nice kitchen, I would really suggest making it as bare as possible in there with a few things like your canisters out or something that's attractive that you like. Uh, if you clutter it up too much, uh, can very very much depress you so these are just a few things that that may help and now after you've done one of your other things uh, that are there's not daily work like I suggested clean one drawer clean one one shelf every day do do one extra thing every day besides that daily work then after you have done that go back to the living room to the bathroom to the bedrooms and maintain them and that means at least once throughout the day, go back and pick up extra clutter, have another look at it, see if things could be culled a little bit more. Um, go back into your kitchen area, check out, see you know, if things are laying out, and maintain it. Then start another project like emptying a bin of things that you have been wanting to go through. So you start emptying that, you get that bin finished, walk through the house again and have another look at the house because sometimes these extra things uh, can cause the whole house to be in an upheaval. So this is what I suggest. I learned this from moving around so much in the old days. When we move around, oh, it'd be just a jumbled heap for so long and I finally figured out if I could get the kitchen clean, stop for a meal, make some area very nice, 
and keep that stuff in another room. I could uh, then start to work on unloading it a little bit, but then always go back to the living room, to the bathroom, to the bedrooms, and to the kitchen and maintain it. It's like people who have been uh, trying to maintain their weight or maintain good habits. You have to go and repeat them. And so today, I just want to encourage you all to remember my last lesson, and that was get dressed, take care of your parents first, because then you feel like you're prepared for anything. And life at home is not going to ever be a regulated thing like life in an office or life in a in a place of uh, employment uh, because you may write down a schedule 9 to 10 do this 10 to 11 do that and you will find that doesn't work with family because people are people have needs and you have little children you're gonna have to stop you're gonna have to fix meals then you're gonna have to clean them up and a lot of the things that you would like to do you might not get to do uh, right away but you just come back to your list again I'm not saying it has to be a schedule just a list uh, so even with all the interruptions and everything just go back and have a look at that list well let's say for example that to your great dismay you don't get anything done on your list well what do you do tomorrow is a new day and you just head back for that number one, number two, number three, number four, and you plug away at it. And eventually, you will get it done, even if you don't get it done in a day. If uh, you also have uh, started a new segment of your life where the children have moved out, they've gotten married, and you're recovering from a wedding, and maybe some uh, a couple of funerals, too, as your grandparents have died or your parents, uh, that even adds more of a, of a problem to your organization because you've had to let a lot of normal things go while you took care of these events. So it's no wonder you can get behind. And it's, it's, no, it's no problem, in my opinion. It's not any reflection on you. It's just that we all have to adjust to what's happening right now. So if you're having a problem getting motivated because there's no one in the house during the day, uh, then what I would suggest is you start doing it to please uh, the Lord and to dedicate your work to God and to ask Him to bless it and to make it acceptable. And also think of yourself as a teacher. If you're spending your day alone and uh, the kids aren't coming over that day or you don't have a company that day, think of yourself when you're working when you're sorting things when you're organizing and when you're cleaning uh, when you're getting uh, meals or when you're cleaning your fridge think of yourself while you do it as your teacher as a teacher for someone alright think of that keep that in your mind instead of just mindlessly cleaning the fridge think about what you're doing you say to yourself okay the first thing I'm doing is I'm unloading the top shelf I'm gonna set all this stuff aside then I'm going to clean that shelf with vinegar and water or then I'm going to clean it with this or that and uh, and now I'm going to dry it and then you, you teach yourself while you're doing it so that you may repeat it if you have to now I know one lady who has taken file cards large the large file cards she's made a file for her children uh, for when they're able to take care of the house more on their own how to clean a fridge and she's observed herself step by step cleaning a fridge for instance, now it's time to put things back. Let's check these bottles and see if it's time to throw them away, if uh, they need to be wiped too, you know. You think about all the fingerprints and things on some of these bottles and dishes you put back, or if they need to be tossed. And she wrote down a list of step by step, down to the finest detail of how to clean a fridge. And then she wrote another list on how to clean a bathroom. Uh, and she would divide it up into the sink, the tub, the toilet, the shelves. And she made a card file for her children. It was very pretty, and she put stickers and embellishments on it. And that way, they could just get it out, and they would know how to clean. You know, that way you don't say to your children, well, go clean the bathroom. They will know every single detail down to the last tiny little thing. And so, if you think of yourself as a teacher, it can be a lot more motivating. So, uh, so if you're having trouble... Uh, getting 
started and keeping on top of things because there's no one there to please, there's a problem there because eventually, uh, you know they say uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Well, that is so true. And those of you who have learned firsthand that uh, if you let something go in a week when you've got some, some event coming up or someone coming over or some reason that you have to do it, you'll wish that you'd plugged away at it day by day instead of letting it go. So, uh, and you can pamper yourself by uh, lighting a scented, scented candle if that's what you like while you work. You can uh, play your favorite uh, movie in the background or your favorite music in the background. Or one of my favorite things is to call a friend and we talk while we do our dishes. And I can hear her dishes clanking in the background and she can hear all the stuff I'm doing. And sometimes it's so amazing because... I will ask her, what did you do while I was talking to you? And she says, I made a bed. And she, they'll put it on the volume. You know, they set the phone down somewhere. They'll make a bed. They'll have the dishes washed. They'll have the trash taken out. They'll have the floor swept. All in the time it took us to talk about something. <laughs> so that that's kind of nice. If you can get someone who likes to do that, who's patient enough to do that. Okay, and then, so the other thing I'd like to remind you is, please do something nice for yourself. Now for me, I don't have to do that anymore because I find that I think getting dressed up is nice enough for myself. I don't have to treat myself to anything and getting out one of my old teacups. That just makes me feel really, really good. And I also wanted to remind you, if you want to find a place for nice teacups, go to Home Goods because sometimes they are cheaper than Goodwill. I think the lowest price that I saw the other day was five dollars and ninety nine cents for a cup and saucer set. Uh, they don't have the gold on them. You can use them in the microwave and you can use them in the dishwasher. And they're quite sturdy and uh, very durable. So if you want to treat yourself to something pretty, why not? The other thing is, I want to come back sometime and talk to you about money. Uh, you might not think I know very much about it, but I, I. Um, I have a t I have techniques on you know how to survive when some of you have said you know towards the end of the month when you're at the lower end of your paycheck or um, if there hasn't been much come in or if you've had an extra expense how you can how you can view money how you can handle that so I hope that I've covered some of the questions that you've had and as I said before don't take what I say as the rule but see what works best for you and as long as you are developing contentment that's another thing that housework will do for you it will make you hate your house less it will make you hate housework less because as you see it getting more and more organized and clean you start to like the place a little bit better and you'll notice the days you want to run away are the days the house is an absolute wreck and, and it's dark and gloomy and, and you don't care for it so if you don't believe in uh, decorating and you don't want to there's no problem with that because in general a house will look a lot nicer just if it's nice and clean so uh, that is that is one of the points on the road to contentment is uh, to be organized to be uh, to be able to look at your house and be happy that you're, that you're there and that's one of the advantages to being a homemaker is that uh, you don't have anybody uh, telling you what to do and you can decide how what kind of atmosphere you want around you so ladies until next time I, I hope you'll read Philippians chapter 4 and I hope you'll uh, leave a comment on my blog which is www.homeliving.blogspot.com and I will include the link here and, uh, and I hope to see you there and please leave a comment thank you bye